SpaceX has not had a very good week. Initially, things were looking good with the successful launch of their Falcon Heavy, and SpaceX even managed to land all three first stage boosters this time around. However, a few days later, the company announced that they had lost the center booster at sea after a set of rough waves. Then, over the weekend, Saturday, April 20th, a test version of SpaceX's new astronaut taxi, dubbed the Crew Dragon, suffered some kind of an anomaly during an engine test at the company's facilities at Cape Canaveral Air Force Station. During a series of engine tests of SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, the vehicle experienced what the company has characterized as an anomaly. The company was counting down during a firing of the Dragon's Super Draco thrusters when the vehicle exploded. This is the same SpaceX Dragon spacecraft that the company is developing and testing to take astronauts into low Earth orbit. It's still unclear what caused the accident, but almost certainly the repercussions are going to push back plans to return human spaceflight operations to American soil. After the accident, large plumes of smoke were seen emanating above Landing Zone 1, where SpaceX conducted Saturday's engine tests, indicating something had gone wrong. It looked like the orange plumes were the result of between 1 and 2 tons of nitrogen tetroxide, the oxidizer used by SpaceX Crew Dragon's Super Draco engines, burning at the location. In this video, Engineering Today will discuss the SpaceX Crew Dragon accident which may dim NASA's hope for a quick U.S. return to launching its own astronauts into space from U.S. soil. What we know, what we don't know, and where SpaceX goes from here after this anomaly. So, let's get into the details. On April 20th, SpaceX conducted a routine launch pad test of its Crew Dragon vehicle, specifically the same one that SpaceX successfully flew for the first time in March. During the uncrewed mission, the spacecraft docked itself with the space station and then returned to Earth, splashing down in the Atlantic Ocean. The spacecraft was being prepared for a launch abort test this summer. This crucial test will demonstrate that the capsule is capable of keeping astronaut crews safe should something go wrong during the launch into orbit. The system is similar to the emergency abort system on the Soyuz rocket, which saved two astronauts during a mishap last October. During this test, the SpaceX Crew Dragon would have launched from Florida on a Falcon 9 booster and the spacecraft's ability to fire its newly designed Super Draco engines to show that the Dragon could pull itself safely away from the rocket in case of a problem with the booster before or during flight. Now that SpaceX has lost this capsule, it must find a substitute for this launch abort test. It's not clear whether it will fabricate a boilerplate vehicle with a Super Draco system of eight thrusters or repurpose one of the Dragons it's built for its crewed flights to the space station. Either way, this is a significant material loss for SpaceX. According to eyewitness accounts, a huge wave of smoke began billowing from the SpaceX launch pad. A video of the incident has now been taken offline. According to the leaked video, it showed the company counting down towards the firing of the Crew Dragon's Super Draco engines. The anomaly occurred within the final 10 seconds of the countdown, and it's not entirely clear whether the Super Draco engines had begun to fire. In its official statement released on Saturday, SpaceX describes the accident as an anomaly and states, Earlier today, SpaceX conducted a series of engine tests on a Crew Dragon test vehicle on our test standing at Landing Zone 1 in Cape Canaveral, Florida. The initial test completed successfully, but the final test resulted in an anomaly on the test stand. Ensuring that our systems meet rigorous safety standards and detecting anomalies like this prior to flight are the main reasons why we test. Our teams are investigating and working closely with our NASA partners. On NASA's end, Administrator Jim Bridenstein said, The NASA and SpaceX teams are assessing the anomaly that occurred today during a part of the Dragon Super Draco static fire test at SpaceX Landing Zone 1 in Florida. This is why we test. We'll learn, make the necessary adjustments, 
and safely move forward with our commercial crew program. It's still not clear what exactly caused the explosion and the extent of the damage the SpaceX Crew Dragon received. The company might have a lot of data about the failure. This was a ground-based test, so the vehicle was heavily instrumented. So theoretically, finding the root cause of the accident should be more straightforward than had a problem occurred during a real flight. Though the destruction of the capsule is bad news for the SpaceX's plans to conduct its summer launch abort test, it will either need to use another Crew Dragon vehicle for the test or create some kind of stripped-down substitute capsule capable of demonstrating the Super Draco thrusters. During past accidents, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has been fairly forthcoming about the cause of the failures, and we hope for similar transparency with this accident. Since this vehicle will eventually carry humans and is funded largely by NASA, transparency is essential to ensuring public confidence in the vehicle and company's processes. Thankfully, there were no injuries caused by the anomaly, which is now under control. The last time we saw this dramatic of a ground-based spacecraft failure was during the Apollo 1 fire in 1967, which cost three human lives. Fortunately, no one was harmed during Saturday's accident, which speaks well of SpaceX's safety practices during such dynamic tests. Had humans been injured or killed, it would have undoubtedly complicated the already complex road ahead for SpaceX. The SpaceX Crew Dragon is supposed to be NASA's answer to the cancellation of the Space Shuttle program. When the shuttle program ended in 2011, NASA lost its only way to transport humans into space on American soil. Since then, the agency has been relying on Russian Soyuz spacecraft to ferry astronauts to the ISS. September was supposed to be the last time American astronauts were to fly to the space station from foreign soil. NASA contracted SpaceX and Boeing to provide an alternate way to send astronauts to space, and both companies have spent the last few years building and testing their own solutions. In 2014, NASA awarded SpaceX $2.6 billion and Boeing $4.2 billion to develop astronaut capsules as part of the program to wean the U.S. off its dependency on Russia to send U.S. astronauts to space. SpaceX's Crew Dragon is currently in the final stages of testing, preparing for a likely first crewed launch later this year. Before this accident, SpaceX and NASA had been targeting early October for the first Crewed Dragon mission to the International Space Station. This recent incident, however, might cause a few delays and put NASA in a stressful situation. Its options for carrying its astronauts into space are once again grim. If the first crewed Crew Dragon mission slips, it might well force NASA to procure even more Soyuz mission seats, which last time around cost $75 million apiece. Earlier this year, NASA signed a deal with Russia to purchase two additional Soyuz seats for one crew member each, which will ensure a U.S. crew presence on the station through September 2020. The agency may well now be forced to return to the Russians yet again to procure more seats through the end of 2020. Space policy expert John Logsdon, who is a professor emeritus at George Washington University's Elliott School of International Affairs and a former member of the Columbia Accident Investigation Board, said, It's still too early to say how exactly the anomaly will affect the program. This is all early talk. We do not know yet what actually happened, so it's premature to speculate on the length of delay for SpaceX or its severity. He's especially skeptical of reading into what this accident might do for future Falcon Heavy plans, saying it's too early to postulate until there's more information. It's hard to say that this is anything but a negative, he said. Test failures are part of the business. Logsdon points out that accidents are par for the course when it comes to spaceflight. Logsdon also stressed that such setbacks aren't terribly surprising. They come with the territory of developing a new crewed spacecraft. We've been down this road before, he said. You have to remind people that we had engines blowing up during shuttle development and clearly we had the Apollo 1 fire. That fire, which took place during a launch rehearsal test on January 27, 1967, is one of NASA's biggest tragedies. It claimed the lives of astronauts Gus Grissom, 
Ed White and Roger Chafee. The Apollo 1 fire, which delayed the program with beneficial results, and also multiple problems on the second Saturn V test launch, which were quickly remedied. During space shuttle development, there were multiple engine problems and problems with the tiles, putting the program well behind schedule. So, this incident has many precedents. Meanwhile, Boeing is also performing its tests later than originally planned, moving the first full test of its CST-100 Starliner capsule to August instead of April. The company plans to squeak its crude test into 2019 with a flight carrying astronauts Chris Ferguson, Mike Finke and Nicole Mann in November. This incident should have no impact on Boeing's schedule, says Logston. For now, we'll have to wait and see what the investigation behind the explosion tells us and whether SpaceX can mitigate the effects this will have on its own and NASA's human exploration plans in the near future. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this. Hit the like button if you find the video interesting and kindly provide your valuable feedback in the comment section. This will help us to improve.